Welcome to our special show, Nomura's View of India. I have with me the brains trust of Nomura. I have the chief economist, uh, uh, Sonal Verma. I have uh, Rabat Avasti, who uh, handles the equity piece, heads it, and heading the fixed income is uh, Neeraj Gambhir. Gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much for joining us at a time when there are a lot of moving parts both within the country and outside. But first up uh, is uh, the Fed decision and the Trump presidency which has changed uh, globally the flow of funds. So that question to you first, Prabhat. For uh, almost since November 8th, there has been this long developed markets and short emerging markets trade that is being played out. How much more is it to go? Are we going to see a lot more money move out of emerging markets? Well, I think uh, to the extent that we have seen the uh, uh, the rally uh, or rather sell-off in, in, in uh, treasuries to, a, to the extent we have seen, uh, I, I suspect a lot of it is done in the sense that we have seen very large outflows and, uh, you know, uh, the U.S. 10-year is at 2.45, largely anticipating uh, the, uh, the Fed hike and so I think it's priced in at least at this point in time. Um, obviously, uh, India was part of the sell-off uh, and we had an added sort of concern from some of the investors on demonetization and that too I think is probably, at least in the in the near term impact sort of people have absorbed that there will be a slowdown they are seeing that data um, there is uncertainty but I think uh, the bulk of sort of panic reactions are probably over over yeah okay but, well in that case uh, Neeraj what are you all working with in terms of uh, a dollar index say in the next six months yeah. and uh, what are you working with in terms of uh, a US tenure in the next six months so I'll give you not six months but 12 months estimates that our strategy team has put out. I think first up, uh, if you look at what the dollar is supposed to do, uh, you're basically looking at, especially with respect to the emerging market, you know, currencies like, uh, say for example, China. Uh, we are expecting somewhere close to five to six percent uh, appreciation of US dollar versus some of these what we call as a little more weaker, you know, emerging market economies. Uh, does the DXY uh, that's, go that's from 102 to 108? No, that's not DXY. This is basically, let's say, uh, what happens to a country like China or Yuan versus, let's say, dollar. As far as the DXY is concerned, I think we don't have an official forecast, but it's more like, say, 3 to 4 percent, you know, appreciation over the next 12 months uh, uh, of dollar versus the other, other uh, major currencies. Within that context, our view around INR is actually far more constructive. Uh, you know, we feel that while rupee will be on a depreciating bias, uh, given the fact that, you know, we need to protect the currency against, uh, you know, purchasing power uh, erosion, we still feel that rupee will actually outperform uh, some of these Asian pairs, the large Asian, Asian pairs, uh, will, you know, approximately 3%. That's the kind of depreciation that we will see in dollar INR over the next 12 months time frame. Uh, the, you could see a lot of volatility around this as the flows move in and out, but fundamentally it still feels like it will probably head towards 70 in dollar rupee over the next 12 months, thank you. All right, I'll come back to both you and to Sonal on, you know, uh, the potential instability of a dollar rally and uh, U.S. Uh, bond yield rise. But uh, before that, uh, Prabhat, uh, what is the view within the emerging market basket? Uh, if the sell-off uh, is more or less over, according to you, uh, within the emerging market basket, what is the pecking order? Well, I can tell you that what we think, and um, our view on India is uh, still is in our regional strategy, is still the preferred market uh, within within uh, Asia. So, uh, and lastly, because despite whatever hiccups you are seeing today, it still remains one of the fastest-growing uh, economies. Uh, uh, you know, our reform process continues. We are still looking at acceleration in growth going forward. Um, so hiccups notwithstanding, the overall sort of bird's eye view, fundamental picture of India still looks the strongest, amongst the strongest uh, in the economies that we track. And Sonu can probably elaborate on that further from macro perspective, but the strongest growth in, uh, you know, GDP and therefore consequently in earnings. Uh, so we just take out two quarters, which are going to be impacted because of the, uh, the domestic demonetization, to sort of go back to uh, faster growth path. Okay. Well, fast test is one thing, but delta is quite another. Uh, Sonal, what is your uh, estimate of uh, uh, you know, the growth hit from demonetization? What kind of GDP growth in the current quarter and next? And in fact, FY18 are you looking at? 
Well, uh, the near term, actually, there are three impacts. Uh, short-term negative effects on India and that's, you know, one obviously is demonetization. Uh, but second, when the GST is implemented, uh, in the run-up to GST implementation, we are also expecting consumer demand to be postponed because manufactured is expected to get cheaper. Uh, and third, you know, as a country, we've been gaining from these terms of trade because of lower commodity prices, which is also reversing. So, you know, the demonetization is on top of these two factors. Uh, but specifically, you know, the biggest hit obviously coming in the December quarter. So our assessment is that growth in this quarter will be down slightly more than a percentage point. So, you know, September quarter we had a growth of 7.3. We are looking at a growth of 6% uh, in the December quarter. Our base assessment is that some of the demonetization impact will spill over into the next quarter as well. Uh, where we're looking at a growth number bit slightly under 7%. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you know, our view is that it is obviously a big disruption, but there's also wealth redistribution taking place, whether it's to the rural households or it's to the government, which is going to be used, or, you know, the money that's going to banks uh, vis-a-vis sitting under the mattresses. The velocity of money uh, because of system rates now coming down because of excess liquidity will be also quite a lot. You know, the organized sector is going to get more market share as compared to the unorganized sector. So there are relative effects on different parts of the economy. There is significant business model disruption for certain sectors that were cash disruptive. But, you know, once the cash shortage eases out, then some of these effects will start to show up. And then you have, you know, states also announcing their pay hikes uh, sometime next uh, year. So putting all of that together, you know, yes, a big drop in growth. Uh, but then we are looking for growth to actually catch up uh, in the second half of 2017. Uh, um, so what is the average growth in, um, uh, F in FY17 and average in FY18? Uh, well, on an average uh, for GDP growth, uh, we are looking at uh, average growth of around 6.8% uh, in, F in FY17. And FY18, uh, we are looking at a growth number closer to 7.3%. Okay, now what does this do to earnings, uh, Prabhat? So earnings are a, a bit more interesting, uh, largely because we track, I, I guess you're talking about headline earnings, yes. index earnings. And uh, my assessment is that it probably cuts the earnings down by 3% and 3 to 4%. So what were you and where are you? So this is I, my expectation on consensus. Yes. Um, the expectation of earnings growth was close to 15, 16%. I think sort of worst cases comes down by 3-4%. And why I'm saying is, uh, why I'm saying that is because if you look at the composition of index, 25% uh, is banks, which actually have rallied, the issue banks have rallied post demonetization because of, you know, yields coming down. 15% is tech, no impact. 15% oil and gas, oil prices actually take it up, so that is going up. Metals are 5-6% on the upward trajectory. Uh, pharma is 7%. So you start adding up, you just left with like 20% or so, which is what you call truly domestic. And out of that, 10% is FMCG. Now that, you can argue that there'll be some impact in the short term, but FMCG will be the least long-term impact, really speaking. And if the redistribution is something that's happening, and we have a good monsoon eventually kicking in, that growth should normalize. You're left with uh, cement, 2%. And, uh, Auto is about 8-9%, auto we start about is 5%. So when you look at truly domestic impact, it's very hard to find earnings impact, which is why the markets are not are doing what they're doing, actually they're not so falling off, because the discretionary consumption as we know it has no place or weightage in the index. You know, because it's all, one is imported. Our cell phones are imported, our white goods are imported. Okay. You know, so we, we actually don't have companies which have that much weightage. Maybe mid caps okay. will have some impact, but the large caps and index actually don't have that much of earnings weightage from uh, what is sort of slowing down dramatically. Let me come to you know uh, sector specific. Uh, you spoke about banks. Now, uh, although uh, public sector bank stocks have been rallying, uh, which part of the financial sector are you confident? The NBFCs have taken what a 30% knock uh, in the past six eight weeks, or from their recent highs. So which part of the financial sector are you confident and why? So banks, the big banks basically, the sector or see, thing is that if you look at the banking sector, you one, sec, uh, one set is what finance broader economy, which is your large banks. 
and there is a sector which finances consumption, discretionary consumption, where is, which is where your NBFCs are playing. So NBFCs are getting getting hit because they are the actual play on on discretionary consumption. You don't have any stocks. Mm. Who's financing cell phone sales, two-wheeler sales, car sales, AC sales? It is, or that is happening through the NBFC space, not that much through bank space. So banks actually are. You're not positive on NBFC for well, now. There, well, I think give it some time and things will actually start to bounce back as this. But if you're asking me, is there an impact on one part of financial space? It will largely be on NBFCs, not that much on banks. That's my point. We have to take a break on that note, but we are coming back with uh, lots more questions and answers from the Nomura team in a minute.